Today's video is jam-packed full of door play. Confusion. Does that count as a scam? I'm, I'm not sure. Gaming. Okay, well, it seems to run the game better than it runs the menus. And a video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Corsair and their new K70 Pro RGB. Now, in my opinion, the main upgrades to this new version of the K70 is that it now comes with double shot PBT keycaps as standard, which is awesome. And the cable is now detachable, terminating in a type C connector on the keyboard, which is very good. There's also a bunch of RGB stuff for those of you that care. Now, this keyboard is available in a large selection of Cherry MX switches. This one has Cherry MX RGB speed silvers in them that sound like this. If this sounds good to you, use the link in my description below to check out the new Corsair K70 Pro RGB. Now this, Adonis of a gaming PC, was Craigslist knife battled off the streets for about 19 US dollars. And when Anna actually showed up to the knife battle, she said, hey, I've got an extra 11 dollars, would you mind throwing in a graphics card? And he did! Look at that! So, for the grand total of about 30 US dollars, we got an entire PC and a graphics card. But before we have a look at that, let's have a closer look at our PC. Oh, it's got little sliding doors on it. I really miss these. Around the back, we've got the kind of power supply that looks like it gets random cavity searches every time it tries to get on an airplane. And then, uh, the only video out we have is a Mesozoic period port, which is a very bad sign. And another bad sign is the fact that we've, we've only got USB 2 ports and no graphics card installed in here. But we did manage to secure a graphics card, so we, we are going to test both situations. So they've definitely not cleaned it before they sold it to us, but you know, it only cost $19. So I guess unless it gives us at least two forms of herpes, can't really complain. But it does mean that it's time for the long awaited return of Valida Gloves. Oh, I can feel it. The Valida power flows through me! So now that I've got Valida's patented stage three herpes protection in place, I can dig around this little system. Now the first thing that I notice about this system, other than the small animal growing in it, is that it has four sticks of RAM! So, someone has clearly been slowly trying to keep this system usable over the last 75 years that it's been alive. Although, let's have a closer look at it, because they do seem to be mismatched. Let's take this out. So the first one is actually a 512 meg stick, which means we have at least a gig of RAM here, I think. And then the next one... Uh. This one is also a 512 meg stick, so I guess we have a total of two gigs. Nice. And the next thing that I notice is a distinct lack of graphics card, which means it's time for everybody's favorite activity, old iGPU gaming. Actually, having said that, uh, the CPU that we have under this cooler is an Intel Core 2 Duo E2160, I think he said, which actually doesn't have an iGPU, and that means that we're not going to be doing old iGPU gaming, we're going to be doing old motherboard GPU gaming, which is even better. Having said that, I think now is a good time to reveal the graphics card that we got as an upgrade option, which is... Well, it has a passive cooler on it, which as we all know is synonymous with extreme gaming performance. It seems to be an ATI HD3450 with a whopping 512 megs of video memory. And alongside that, we get a significantly more modern assortment of video outs, which feels really weird to say about what we're looking at. But yeah, it's always nice to have an upgrade option sorted for your $19 PC. Other than that, we also have a best tech power supply, which I'm not going to smack talk because someone is invariably going to tell me how this is like a subsidiary of Seasonic or FSP because apparently all power supplies are. <laughs> With that, let's close up this little piece of crap and try and game on it. Now, I was busy looking at various ways to install halfway usable I.O. on this system uh, when I realized something. I don't think it came with a hard drive in it. Now I went back and had a look at the listing, and although he didn't specifically say that the system came with a hard drive in it, he did say that it was a working PC, which I feel like kind of implies 
that it, it comes with a hard drive in it. So I'm not quite sure if I've been scammed or not here. But anyway, while I try and figure out if I think I've been scammed or not, uh, let me drop an actual hard drive in here, install Windows on it, and then we can do some gaming. Okay, now we need to hope that A, it actually fires up, and B, that if it fires up, it doesn't just release a bunch of flesh-eating bacteria into the office. Because even for $19, I think that's something you can complain about. Uh, but anyway, let's... Oh! So much did you... So much dust! I am, in fact, not getting a video out. After the PC very politely obliged with said flesh-eating bacteria, it refused to boot. So, I very resentfully went through a bunch of basic troubleshooting steps, none of which worked until I removed one of the kits of RAM. Hey, it was the RAM! At which point I plugged the second kit of RAM back into the system and, well, it booted, which means... Okay, so it was clearly my fault that it wasn't booting because um, I didn't plug the RAM back in properly. So it, it was it was my fault. Um, okay, nice, moving on. Okay, now the next hurdle we're gonna have to overcome is to see if I can install Windows on it using a flash drive. And after spending ages digging through the system's BIOS, I came to the conclusion that no, you in fact can't install Windows on it using a flash drive. So I guess I have to go find a DVD somewhere. Okay, so I've just spent a while trying to get the system to boot off a DVD until I eventually realized that there's no SATA cable plugged into the DVD drive. Like, what the hell is this system? But after solving this problem, I still wasn't done struggling. I ended up having to burn multiple Windows 10 install DVDs, each of which took like an hour to burn. But eventually, I made some progress. So, it's been 17 years of struggling. Hopefully, this is the DVD Windows install that works. That's a good sign. Yes! Yes! At which point I just needed to spend another several hours struggling to install Windows 10 and all of the appropriate software I needed, but I was finally getting there. It is now the next morning and we're about to do some gaming on this system. Now, I'm not expecting much because the PC is already blue screened twice just trying to install some games on it and it runs Windows 10 like it's recently been maced in the face several times. So I don't think this is gonna go very well, but let's see what kind of gaming performance we get from motherboard based graphics. Mm. Let's try one more time. Okay, there we go, that's... Pro uh, no, it's just gone straight back to play. Okay, so Bioshock's out of the question. Let's try the next game down. Hey, look at that! GTA San Andreas is launching. This is, this is going well. Granted, 800 by 600 is quite a racy resolution to try run it at. Oh! Oh, what's happened? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop the resolution further. We can drop the resolution one more step. Oh, I'm, I should not be in the road. That old lady almost murdered me there. Now, the thing that really surprises me about this gaming performance is that clearly the GPU on the, on the motherboard is not the bottleneck here. Yeah, that's not very promising considering that the only upgrade that I have available for this system is a graphics card and that may not help very much. Anyway, let's try a different game. One frame per second in the menu is a very good start. Uh, at least it is trying to render the game, so that makes me feel a bit better about the one FPS. Oh, why is it all on high? That's very brave. And after spending some time struggling to lower the settings, I clicked on low. Why do you keep going back to medium? I could finally play some Half-Life 2. Okay, well, it seems to run the game better than it runs the menus. This is easily the worst I've ever seen a game run. Like, it's it's not even a competition at this point. Like, this is, this is absolutely shocking. The issue is definitely driver-based because Windows 10 does not support this GPU. <laughs> 
I'm I'm stuck on the piece of wood because I can't, I can't I can't deal with the wood. Twenty minutes later. This is the most I've ever struggled to get through a door. Like <laughs> I've just been I've just been defeated by the door because it's too <laughs> Can I finally- Oh, I finally got through! Wait, am I hitting him? I don't even know what's happening. I think so. I'm about to die. <laughs> I'm not even gonna be able to make it outside. <laughs> and then the audio glitches started kicking in, which was just too much for me. <laughs> so I don't think Quake 2 is working. Th that's the best I've been able to get it to run. W whatever is happening over there. I think this is a good place to drop in that graphics card that we got off the person for 15 Canadian dollars. Drop it in here and see. Maybe we can find drivers that makes that run a bit better. Let's, let's see what happens. Now just a quick reminder again, the graphics card that we got for just a couple extra dollars is this bad boy, which is an HD 3450, uh, which almost definitely also doesn't have driver support in Windows 10, but hopefully we can figure something out. One of my favorite things about Valida gloves is how easy it makes doing delicate operations like putting a screw on a screwdriver. Okay, well, Bioshock launched now, and um, it's handling the menus very well. Well, I'd say this is running infinitely better than it was before, because, well, we couldn't get Bioshock running, and now we're getting about 17 frames per second, which is about 17 times better than the system was running Half-Life 2. <laughs> so at 720p, Bioshock isn't really playable, but it does feel like a luxury high-end gaming experience compared to before. <laughs> Whoa, we've breached a hundred frames per second, which means it's a hundred times better than before. And I feel like paying $11 for a hundred times more performance is probably the highest value upgrade that's ever happened in the history of PC gaming. And we can even use a gun outside, which is mind blowing. This is, this is a, <laughs> this is so much better than before. I mean, granted it is still at 720p low settings. So this is still a shockingly terrible Half-Life 2 gaming <laughs> experience, but you know, let's not focus on that. Let's try and ignore that. So with that, what have we learned from today's video? Um. I, I'm not entirely sure about that one. Maybe you can let me know in the comment section down below. Also, if you enjoyed the video, please do subscribe to the channel because the flesh-eating bacteria released by the PC told me that unless we get a bunch of subscribers from this video, they'll dissolve my body slowly and painfully. So please do whatever's in your power to prevent that. And yeah, until the next video, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.